Father, I give you all of my thoughts today. I would have none of mine. In place of them, give me your own. I give you all of my acts as well, that I may do your will instead of seeking goals which cannot be obtained and wasting time in vain imaginings. Today, I come to you. I will. And merely follow you. Be you the guide, and I the follower who questions not the wisdom of the infinite, nor love, whose tenderness I cannot comprehend, but which is yet your perfect gift to me. Okay. Hi everyone and welcome to Come Into The Light. I'm here with um, Greg Donner, um, my very, very special guest. And um, yeah, I met Greg three years ago um, with his wife Jenny at a retreat in Scotland. And I can honestly say that, um, yeah, my life has just completely and utterly changed. Um, and it's been incredible. And, um, you know, the symbols of Greg and Jenny coming to, into my life at that time were just um, just so perfect. And, um, yeah, I don't know how to find the words to express the gratitude for that. And, um, yeah, and just, yeah, I knew if I looked at Greg, it would be like, oh, my goodness I'm going to cry <laughs> um, but yeah um, it's been quite a ride these last three years and um, I'm just so so grateful and uh, yeah I'm going to start the show um, with a little bio from Greg and um, yeah and then I'm going to get into some deeper questions and a little later on in the show, we might just have a surprise guest as well along with us. So, okay. Uh, so this bio is just going to give you a little bit of background about Greg. Um, he found a passion and direction for life in high school when he began to study art. He made a decision to dedicate his life to art as an undergraduate and proceeded to live as an artist and as a teacher of art. Greg also had another calling. He became involved in spiritual communities around 1999 and this included mystical practice with Native American teachings. When A Course in Miracles appeared in Greg's life around 2005. He found his life be begin to move through a slow transition into a life of full devotion to spiritual practice and community. And as Greg puts it, I felt more than anything in my life that I wanted an experience. I love to use my hands to build and to make and to paint and these things transferred over to community in 2012 when I joined Living Miracles and their volunteer building team. About halfway through his first year in community, he started a relationship with an elder member of the community, Jenny. His marriage to Jenny in 2015 was an introduction to a much deeper kind of collaboration than he was ever used to. It involved lots of travel and meeting many new friends from around the world. 
Jenny was involved with the publications team since the beginning of her working with David, so it was natural that he became more and more exposed to the inner workings of publications. This current book project that we're going to talk about came about in a very different way. David was approached by a mid-sized publisher to print and distribute a book that would reach a broad-based reader interested in deepening their spiritual paths. The name of this book is This Moment is Your Miracle, The Spiritual Tools to Transform Fear into Freedom. For Greg, as with all the projects and community, this book is a means to celebrate and immerse in the clear teachings brought to us by David Hofmeister. Okay, so Greg, in your bio, you say more than anything, I wanted an experience. Can you tell us what that experience was that you were looking for? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. I'll start with saying that um, I, needed an, I needed an experience um, right from the beginning because I was quite dead as a high school you know, student. So art was a physical experience. And so I learned that way. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> building, you know, also, as you shared already, that that came in and was a way for me to experience um, really life and inspiration. Um, and, and so as I moved through the different spiritualities that you spoke about too, that the Native American spirituality was very experiential. And it was, a lot of it was relying on the outside because that's how I could, you know, engage and feel alive and, and that. And Native American spirituality practiced uh, fasting, no food, no water, dancing for three, for four days, three nights. And so it was like very visceral and I responded to those things. And I think that's why I was an artist. That's why I was a builder and mm -hmm. moved in yeah. spirituality that way. And then the thing is, is it's like you can almost see how the mind was tied into the external somewhat still. And I'm kind of, kind of see this more holistically and, or evolutionary in a sense that um, um, it, it, I still, I was depressed. I was depressed my whole life. I never knew a day without depression. It didn't exist. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So, and even medications and stuff, they worked for a little while. I got a sense of normalcy, but then that disappeared. And so in my spiritual seeking, which involved many different other communities, which involved, um, yeah, different processing, a lot of processing, a lot of, you know, the anger work, the grief work, the releasing, releasing, releasing. And after years, it was still like, I still wanted an experience <laughs> <laughs> because I was, I was still depressed, you know. And actually, the course came in around 2005 and a deeper part of my mind started to recognize that the externals really couldn't there was something still missing and a shift happened in my mind. Um, actually, I think the shift happened before, but I knew I needed something much more directly related to my mind and I needed a practice, although there were still practicing in rituals and stuff and those other things, but I needed something like constant. I needed, I realized I needed mind training mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. intuitively I knew the course in miracles was that. And, um, after reading about it, after the metaphysics totally lit up, you know, for me and clarified my Catholic background, which, you know, was still a little bit confusing, a little foggy. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I knew there was a day-to-day -day practice, when I knew that I could have a chance and experience and, and really start working deeper in my mind, mm -hmm. um, actually it was after eight months or nine months or something like that, the, the depression lifted actually it lifted without medications and, and that was the first it was very slow i actually had this this resonance in my you know in my temples and it started going around my, my 
my, my, you know, my head and then kind of went to the back of my, the base of my skull. And then it, I felt it stop right there. And I was like, huh. And this was all over a period of a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I guess that's where my work is, you know, cause it's basically what it was saying was metaphorically, there's a core separation. There's a core loss. There's a core issue there that has to be addressed. And so it's kind of, that was the experience that I was looking for. That was so, it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. Can you tell us about the internal transition from being an artist uh, to compiling a book? It feels like quite a, yeah, quite a different area yeah. to work in. Yeah. I kind of prefaced it, prefaced it in a little bit because there was still some external focus, you know, going on with uh, the art and with the, the building and experiential spirituality. Um, And so in a sense, what happened was another way to put it. So you can see there that, that I, in my mind, I started to focus more that, that it was realized that it was an internal experience that I had to really address in my mind, but also there's another thing that just happens and it's, it's a great fa- uh, a great um, uh, phrase, which is that relationships can be maximized and the art was maximized. And even in community, I just watched the building practice get maximized, like that sort of relationship. And when in 2003, I had a fairly successful show, like my art was, from my standards, it didn't sell very well. It was a few paintings sold. But from my standards, I put my heart into it. I said, in fact, I lost money because I quit most of my jobs. And then I, I went, okay, there was like six or so months where I just poured my heart into this because I had a, a solo show coming up um, there in Houston. And it was a huge, huge room with lots of space. And I could make these big paintings and, you know, and so I, I just poured my heart into it. and and. It was really, again, spirit was using the relationship. It maximized it really right then in a a sense. Mm -hmm. But then over the years, I was wondering what to do with myself. I didn't know what to do. Um, Come after the course started settling in. And yeah, I mean, I, I was starting to feel detached from what I was doing, like as a teacher. And I was starting to get more relaxed and more comfortable and connecting with my students more deeply. And then, so the art was starting to, to fade away. I didn't know what to do. So I just, I really just kept praying. Um, and this is a little bit of an anecdote more than anything, but because the Course in Miracles was really resonating with me. And so I didn't know what to do with images. I mean, when my thoughts are images I've made and like, I already know that, you know, so I was making these worlds, you know, in, in my paintings. And, and then the value of those images started to drop away. And I, I kept praying. I was like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And I was like feeling, well, I'm kind of inspired to do the lessons. I was inspired to do, paint the lessons. And so I kept praying. I was like, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to do unless I hear something otherwise. And, I, and that went on for years, actually. That went on for years with that, that prayer of what do I paint and why? And you know, and, the, and, and I, I enjoyed doing that. I mean, I would be with the, the lessons for days and days. So that was an experience. So when and, the book and, came in, how did yeah. that, you know, all that vibrancy mm-hmm. and aliveness around the art, how did that transfer to, to actually compiling the book? Is there... Yeah. Well, if we're sticking with the art theme, and this is just <laughs> something that I just realized just recently, but it's kind of cool because I resonated with the Renaissance artists. I was like, these guys would paint, these guys would stay years. They would take years painting mm. this, these paintings. And, and all the attention and everything went into it. And so I realized, oh, wow, because I did a painting like that. I spent a year, over a year on it and like actually couldn't, didn't know how to finish it. and came it finished later on but so in just sort of joining this past week i realized there's a connection there because this book is like a compilation of 
it's like compilation of 25 years and gems and just the best of the best. And, um, and, um, it's, you know, you could say it has like 40,000 parts and yet it's coming together as a whole. And a Renaissance painting is like that, or, or the, the, the kind of art that I made was like that. So it's like, I realized that it's in it. And also the devotion too. like, it took devotion to, to be a painter. It took discipline and I really needed that. Um, and so it transfers here and there's, I have inspiration about that. I mean, I, I feel I, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. where's the devotion start? Does it start with the teachings or because we're here? It's like, it's all molds and melds into one. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As I understand it, uh, this project has been a grand collaboration with over 50 people, including myself. Um, yeah, yeah. It was about the time that I moved into the Spanish community that this book project came in. Um, so I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about the collaboration and how, yeah. that, how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so many ways we can talk about that. Yeah, it's been really cool because um, collaboration has involved mostly people from outside of the core live-in community. Um, and like in Spain, there would be these opportunities to come together. Um, we, we had a, a devotional in um, February of last year that you helped actually with me. We actually wrote a whole email and a whole letter about it, you know, how, how this devotional is going to go really deep and and as this is our purpose together. And so there was this strong purpose, you know, behind, behind coming the collaboration. And we would normally have teams that would, you know, develop and then sort of dissolve and develop and dissolve. That would be one kind of form of the collaboration, which was really beautiful because there was all this ebb and flow that we really couldn't, really, there was really no control over it. It's just all just really happened. Mm -hmm. And the devotional in Spain was a big part of that. You were, you were involved with the, um, the guidance chapter. We had relationship teams, guidance team, and they yeah. would just come together and gather um, 50 of David's uh, transcripts, talks from different places around the world. Mm -hmm. And they would just sift through them and just we would get these intuitions about what the content was for that chapter and we would kind of feed it to you guys and share about it we would join on it and then you guys would go off and scan through the material yeah, together in pairs and the, compile a um yeah. compile yeah. a new document <laughs> with maybe 30 pages on relationships and so there, there's so many different ways um yeah. Collaboration is offline or, or you know, is, is long distance online and, and also usually within the, the little small group that we, we have together, you know, right now at Bliss, which mm. is four of us. Right now. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, mm. I'm just feeling to bring our yeah. surprise guest in. And, um, mm. yeah, these questions are going to go across. Yeah to Jenny, who was the other person that uh, <laughs> I first met with my first introduction to Living Miracles. And I just had this, this thought, you know, like it's Easter and, um, yeah, just um, breathing life, the spirit into this body three years ago. And, yeah, just, again, you know, just that feeling of gratitude to you both and, it goes so deep, there's just not words for it, but welcome, Jenny. It's beautiful Thank you, to Anne. have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it is mm. beautiful to be here together. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I've, I've got some questions, but I, I know that Jenny might shake it up and ask me questions too, and that's okay. That comes in. Uh, but, yeah, it was... Um, it was about forgiveness, the next question. Um, and that's really our life in community. And I just want to understand really how um, 
yeah, how it relates to the book project and basically have you got any parables around forgiveness, something that, that actually occurred, you know, in, in the compiling of the book and yeah. Mm. And that's a question for either or both of you. Right. Well, I think every day actually is devoted to forgiveness mm -hmm. and this book project, um, helps us in a way because it is like joining with with the light with the message all the time so you can't get away you can't get away for long with anything <laughs> because what you're working with in the book is usually what you need to to hear because that's how spirit works i'm sure almost every course student have experienced that when you open the course it's exactly what you need or when you put a song on is exactly what you need to hear yeah. and as far as specific examples um, nothing the timeline to, the timeline I mean directly to... related to <laughs> it's it's pretty new because generally uh, the community doesn't really work with deadlines and like you know have like the pressure of like a, a job or something like that out in the world so and it's been neat though it's been neat to watch like we have a deadline you know it's like well this is very unusual and so um one great thing one a um, huge thing that happened is that we compiled the book basically in november and we turned in our first big batch and they returned it back to us saying i mean it was actually pretty strong criticism like we missed the mark basically you know and in, in different things and we're just watching that from you know, from like more of an observer perspective. But what they suggested though, was that we take seven chapters, which is what the book was, and turn it into 17 chapters. And we were in our mind going, we're floating, we're sailing along, we're really, we're doing <laughs> great. We just have all this time to, to edit and to, you know, to refine it and stuff like that. But um, so it was a really mind watcher really just to, to watch that and underneath and it was I mean it was very mild for I think Jenny and I we didn't really feel actually felt inspiration under that because we needed the support and the collaboration is so different than anything that we uh, worked with before so um, she they gave us such good feedback and we we're like oh my god this is miraculous like we do our part and then we can only go so far and then they give us back these incredible perfect suggestions so yeah. it's a very interesting collaboration that that we're having here so there and i think there was some deeper forgiveness with others too with it but but i think you know it was just sort of like a shock a surprise and just like oh my god a little nervousness a little fear but then it's like the inspiration underneath that is like yeah oh, seven more months of of yeah full on full on we got to do the whole book again so we had so 40 percent of the book was missing still because we had 17 chapters now to fill. And so there was this, you know, the sense of letting spirit do it. I mean, in, in miracles like that, all throughout the whole thing, just everything was just given at the time we needed it. And it was actually inspiring. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I've uh, got one last question, um, which is who is the book for? Um, who would want to read it? Um, why? Well, what I feel is that who wants to read it is the one who wants to join with the light. Mm. In fact, mm. because it's, uh, I don't know if I can put this into words, but it's like, um, I, this book is, um, is David's, David's voice, spirit's voice through David, which is such that when he goes out to meet people, he can meet anyone and spirit is extending through him. So I feel that uh, that's, that's, what, that's what I, that's my passion, to bring that through a book to the world. And so um, this book, the publisher suggested early on that this book will be for like, a new spiritual seeker that is, um, may, has maybe a Christian background that has touched upon spirituality, has not yet gone deeply into it. And, um, and I thought, 
oh, that's me 15 years ago. So I got really in touch with that. So it felt like so perfect because my heart is also burning to, to share with, um, with those people who, who are who I was. Um, so, so yeah, I would say, yeah, anyone who wants to join with the light and wants, you know, a, a beautiful, fresh experience, not just new spiritual seekers, I feel this book will actually be a companion for, for anyone who, who wants a holy relationship, a mighty companion, because that's what this mm. message is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I really feel the book for, for myself as well because, you know, there are some gaps in, in yeah, in what I know um, and what I understand from the course. So I'm, I just can't wait. And um, it, I'm not sure what the date is when it's coming out or if you have any ideas as yet. But. It's February 2019. Okay. <laughs> That's very clear then. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's um, that's the end of any questions that I've got. I just want to, uh, yeah, just thank you both for being here, mm -hmm. for your openness and your honesty and your credible answers to the questions. And, yeah, just for being the light for this body. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for so many more. And, um, yeah, just this book. Like you say, you know, the inspiration, everything that's underneath it is just such a light for, for the world. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.